Boxing Voice. All right, we're live with Jillian Leibarger. Uh, well, Jillian, I, I guess this uh, uh, interview is going to be a little unorthodox because this will be your, your pro debut and you're making a transition from MMA to boxing. So I guess the first yeah. question is, why? Why switch from MMA to boxing? I'm I'm never going to give up MMA. Um, I just got through a full fight camp for an MMA fight, and um, the show ended up not happening. So I spent a lot of money in a nine-week fight camp um, and really frustrated since at the end of it you don't get a payday. Um, so this boxing match was brought to my attention over social media. So I said, why not? Um, it is it's completely different, boxing and MMA. But I'm looking forward to the challenge. Um, maybe do a couple more pro boxing matches, see how this one goes. But I'll never leave MMA. So your heart is with MMA. It is. I, I started MMA seven years ago. Um, I'm I'm a fanatic in the stand up game, which a lot of my MMA opponents know. But um, so I think I think yeah, my heart does belong in MMA right now. But I'm looking forward to this opportunity and see where it goes. Uh, you know, it's interesting that you say that because if you're, what you're saying is uh, you enjoy the stand-up game, which is essentially boxing outside of elbows and forearms. Yeah, which is, um, I, I think when I first started MMA seven years ago, um, I first started with the boxing coach. So I think that's where where it belongs. Um, now that I'm working with some and sparring with some top female boxers, all they know is boxing. So it's, it's interesting how um, my stance is different, which I had to change going into this fight. Um, I need to stop looking for takedowns, stop looking for kicks. So it's a whole different game. So I, I like that I, I'm, I'm changing it up. I noticed my hand speed has gotten a lot quicker and my stance is a little more upright, which is, which is great overall. So everything's good right now is coming out of it, which is awesome. Do you feel that you may be at a disadvantage because your preparation for this training camp was solely based on MMA and now you're making the switch kind of last minute into boxing? I think so. I do. Um, but my whole attitude is at the end of the day, it's a fight. Um, and, and that's how I look at it. It, it. It's her and I going in there, and it's going to be a fight. Um, I My fighting style, I don't think she's ever seen before since she's making her pro debut in boxing as well. Um, with MMA, our rounds are five minutes. I know how to push the pace and uh, stay aggressive, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm trying to stay positive about it. It, it is a little bit different, but I'm looking forward to it. Now, in MMA, uh, women's MMA or men's MMA, is it is it five three minute? I mean, five, excuse me, three five minute rounds. Okay, so women's MMA and, and men's MMA is exactly the same. If it's a title fight, it's five five minute rounds. If it's a non title fight, it's three five minute rounds. That will never change. We wear the same exact four-ounce MMA gloves, we wear mouth guard, and the guys wear cups. That's it. Females don't have to wear anything extra. Um, so it, do, it doesn't change. Everything's across the board for, for male and females. How has been the reception once, because you, you said this fight got made basically on social media, so once your followers, your fans of you seen that you were going to make the switch, has there been any negative comments? Simply, and the only reason that I ask is because we're on two different sides of the spectrum. Uh, boxing, we don't mix well with MMA, and MMA doesn't yeah. mix well with boxing. Uh, you know, one or the other basically thinks they're better than the other or that it's a ripoff of the other. So uh, this is maybe a tough transition for you. How has it been with your fans? The transition has been great. Um, my twin sister and I were both um, female fighters. We have the best fans out there, and on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, on our website when the poster went up, I've had nothing but great feedback, which is awesome. I'm truly blessed to have the sponsors, my fans, my teammates all behind me, so that that makes it even better. Now, and again, I, I don't want to get into the financials, but 
the minute I was told, uh, you know, of your decision to become a pro boxer, I, I just told myself, why? Because I believe women make more money in MMA than they do in boxing, right? Oh, it's it's night and day. MMA females, our fight purses are, we're lucky. We're Our fight purses are, are great. Um, boxing, uh, not so much. But the promoter that we're working with for this fight, he has been really generous. He helped me get my medicals in California all taken care of because that was the only state that I wasn't um, cleared to fight in yet. He's been nothing but great. So I'm happy that. I'm going to go with this promoter for my first boxing fight because he's been nothing but helpful. Well, I, and, I'm wishing you luck in this fight because I feel that what you and your sister bring uh, can be an advantage for boxing. Uh, we, we get so much, I guess, statements made in, in the media about boxing being dead, and it's, it's far from that. It's one of the highest generating uh when it comes to financing, I mean, the, the, the highest paid athlete in the world is Roy Mayweather Jr., and his event with Canelo, uh, you know, broke records. But women, we it's scarce. There's not very many women. I mean, you know, uh, you have the Kalisha Wests of the world and Ava Knight, but it's hard for them to find fights. And, and if you can bring that fan base and that level of attention that you already had in MMA, because I know about you know, the, the, the things that you've done in the past with uh, children with autism and, of course, you know, um, the unfortunate situation with some of the members in your family with cancer and, and you yeah. uh, being part of um, it, it's in chemo, that level of attention that you have can possibly make it, you know, you can probably be the next Christy Martin where she was a female, but she got paid well because she was so popular. Yeah. And, and that, and I'm glad you did your homework on that. That that means a lot to me. Um, you know, cancer, autism, all that is huge to me. Just spreading awareness, and the quickest way to do that is if you're out there on social media. So it, it that means a lot. So I appreciate that. Well, so now, how are you coming into this? Because you know, again, me being a boxing reporter. I've already got my guard up. So I'm hearing you say, oh, well, you know, my fight fell through. So someone told me, and uh, it seems almost as if you're not giving it 100%. Or, well, not that you're not giving it in training camp, but that you're not coming into this 100%. Is your opponent going to be a debut fighter as well? Because I, I couldn't find any information on your opponent. Um, She is. It's her pro debut also in boxing. And obviously – She's been doing boxing a lot longer than I have, so I know it's going to be a tough fight. Um, the fight's going down in San Diego a week from today, and San Diego's my hometown, so I'm happy that I'm going to have the family and the fans behind me in San Diego. Um, but, no, I'm going into it 100%. I'm not looking at, looking at it um, that I'm better than her. Like, I'm going into her game, you know? All we get to use is hands and stuff, so I'm going into her game, which which I'm looking forward to. But I am going into 100%. Like I said, I'm not going into this like, oh, this is a payday for me. I, you know, and I'm working with boxing coaches now. I'm going to switch up what I have to wear when I fight, which is interesting. Like, So I'm, I'm excited for it, but not taking it uh, uh, lightly at all or lightly at all. So... I'm going to be interested to interview you afterwards because I want to see if boxing can uh, steal you away. If, you know, okay. being in that ring and, 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 and going up against someone who's been doing this long before yourself and, you know, you just going into it and giving it 100% and being able to come away with that win, it, it, it might uh, be some sort of incentive for you. It might I don't know, maybe you have an epiphany in the ring and you see that this is your calling and it just took MMA to get you here. Uh, do you think that that can be a possibility? Yeah, I'm not um, giving up on anything. Or... I like how you worded that right now, and that could be a, a true statement. And if it is, you know, I'll welcome it and keep working with the boxing coaches that I'm working with, and it'll be exciting. So talk to us a little bit about the differences in, in preparation for MMA 
MMA in preparation for boxing? How has it been different? Uh, because, again, MMA, you use so much physical strength to, with, you know, throughout your entire body, whereas boxing, like you said, it's more of a stand-up game. People use their legs uh, for movement uh, and, of course, their arms. But there's no grappling. There will be no, uh, I don't even know what the name of those, arm bars. There's not going to be any arm bars here. <laughs> It's different. The training's different. Um, it's a lot of shoulders. Uh, it's a lot of punches. Get used to get your arms used to that feeling of feeling fatigue and recovering from that and throwing a hundred more punches. So it's just it's a lot of movement, kind of angles, head movement. Like like that's what it is. That's what you need to keep thinking to yourself in and out, keep moving. Like as far as MMA, you know, I would be with um, my Muay Thai coach in the morning and strength and conditioning in the afternoon, and then you got wrestling and jiu-jitsu. Like, it's everything. It's your whole body. Um, with boxing, my days are a little bit shorter as far as practice-wise. I don't have to see three different coaches. I only have to see two, a boxing and a strength and conditioning coach, um, which is nice. But it, it, it is different. It is different. In the beginning, I thought, okay, there's not going to be much that I have to do. But once I got thrown into it and I was sparring with top-level girls, like, I was like, okay, this is different. This is different. You know, their their jab is their number one tool to set things up. With MMA, ours is uh, kicks, teeth kicks, shooting for the takedown, maybe faking on the takedown. Like, it's just constant. So um, it, it, it it's different, and I, I enjoy it a lot right now, so... I'm really happy. Well, that's good. I hope we can convert you over, uh, a little similar to religion. So let me <laughs> ask you, um, have you watched any tape? Just, again, because you're an MMA fighter, you know, guys coming up or girls coming up watching boxing, they always watch someone. They always have a favorite fighter. Yeah. So, you know, you tend to, you know, subconsciously mimic your your your, your idols. That may not be the same for you because, you know, you, you, you're an MMA fighter. Right, right. Um, I don't have anyone in boxing that that I watch right now. Um, there is my twin sister. She's getting ready to um, – she's in talks with the UFC right now. A lot of great things happening with my twin sister. And um, I want to say my stand-up game, I try and mimic her a lot because her stand-up coach is a lot of head movement, in and out. Um, a lot of faints. So, you know, having a twin sister, identical twin in the same sport, I think that that has helped me a lot. And also I, I, I try and mimic her a little bit on the feet. Now, I need you to elaborate on that. How does having a twin sister help you? In, in the beginning, um, I started doing MMA first. After my first amateur uh, MMA fight, I knocked the girl out in 34 seconds, and when my twin sister saw that, she's like, whoa, I want to do this too. So then my twin sister and I, we quickly became the first ever female twin fighters in the world, um, which helped us a lot with uh, promoting ourselves and um, charities that we're involved in. But it, it, it has its pros and cons. When you have somebody with you every single day who looks just like you, does the same job as you, fights the same way as you. It's kind of hard. Um, I think it's brought us closer, but at the same time, we've, we've had our ups, or, ups and downs, just like any brother and sister sisters have. Um, but when, when, when I see my sister and where she's at now and she's done the same thing with me, we kind of want to, we want to be right there with each other. You know what I mean? So it's more of a motivational thing. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, unfortunately, you will not be the first twins in boxing if she decides <laughs> to follow in your footsteps because uh, we have the Jamel, uh, the Jamel and Jamal Charlo twins out of Texas. They're actually, uh, you know, very heavily touted prospects, and one is a contender at this point uh, ready for a title shot. But, when coming up with strategy for this fight, um, did you automatically assume that it would be easier because there's so many less tools that you have to worry about? Like you spoke of, you don't have to worry about someone 
going for the takedown or someone putting you in some weird grappling move, you only have to worry about the person in front of you and very little holding. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. We've had our fair yeah. share of hold sets in boxing that we don't like, but holding is not really condoned or allowed in boxing. Technically, you're not even supposed to hold. Um, to be honest with you, in the beginning, I was like, okay, good. So now i got to worry about one thing. But then when I started sparring with the guys and the girls, there, there's there's no break. Like you said, with the holding, when you go in for a second, if you're right back out and you're doing it again, punching again. When my biggest thing that I was having trouble with is when I throw my combos and I'm in and out and I'm moving, I want to go down because it's like I'm trying to set up a takedown. So that's my biggest pet peeve right now, which my coach is trying to break, and I'm doing a lot better at it, is there is no takedown. There's no reason for you to lower your bottom half as if you want to shoot for a takedown. Now, I'll, I'll lower my body bottom half and throw body shots and other guys, but there, there's no takedown there anymore. So I think that, that was my biggest transition. Well, I'm no coach. At all, and I don't play one uh, on a sitcom anywhere, but maybe it's not a bad thing that you've been down. I mean, uh, there were some very successful fighters that, that fought in a crouched down sort of stance. I mean, uh, Joe Frazier definitely comes to mind. He bobbed and weaved a lot and kept himself crouched down low uh, and had a dangerous left hook. But uh, the most probably notable uh, person would be Mike Tyson, very short. Very compact and always stood crouched down, and it worked wonderfully for him. His uppercuts were amazing. Yeah, it mine's like a weird. <laughs> mine's like a weird crouch down. <laughs> but yeah, I hear what you're saying. So, so, talk to me about networks. Is this going to be televised, streamed? Is there any way that all your fans are going to be able to watch this if they can't make it to San Diego? That, that's what I'm looking into right now. Um, I heard Go Fight Live. Um, but I'm really not sure at this moment. Um, all my fans and followers, they all know, Justice Jill, Twitter, um, I'll let you guys all know if it can be uh, streamed live. If not, um, I'll have my manager post up the results ASAP. Well, Go, Go Fight Live is, a, is a, good, uh, a good avenue. I mean, they do a lot of coverage on um, boxing as well, uh, and they're, they're – Fairly inexpensive. I think it's ten to fifteen dollars for a stream. Uh, for the yeah, whole I think, card, yeah. Rather. So again, uh, you know, getting back into it. So, what does your sister think? Is, is, is she a little upset that you left MMA, or does she understand oh, no, the situation? She she understands the situation where I'm at right now. You know, she's there with me, uh, sparring with me when she has time in between her practices. We did. Hill sprints last night. Um, I believe we're doing a track workout later tonight. Like, we're each other's worst enemy and best friends at the same time. You know what I mean? And um, she's super excited for me. She's try- She's in fight camp right now. She's going to be fighting beginning of October for um, MMA fight, of course. And um, she's trying to make, to make it work if Coach approves it so she could come with me to San Diego. So well, how would you describe your fighting style now as a boxer? Um, you know, Mexicans are typically aggressive. Um, African Americans are typically the slicker, more technical boxers. Europeans use a high guard. Where would we categorize Jillian, even though this is only going to be your first fight, so we would have to take your word for it? I take pride in my cardio. Um, I have a great conditioning coach who I've been with for a long time. I take pride in my cardio. Um, I don't stop. I'm always coming forward. I'm moving around. Um, that's my biggest thing. Is I'm, I'm super aggressive. I like to dictate the pace and where it's going to go. Um, just like in the cage, like the, the I was known for staying in the center of the cage, and that's it. I tell the fighter what's going to happen, um, and I'm hoping, which I'm pretty, I am, I'm pretty confident that's going to be the same exact result. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad that you brought back the conditioning aspect because when I spoke about the, uh, you know, three, five-minute rounds, I had a hunch that that may be beneficial for you since we only have three-minute rounds and pro debuts are usually four-round fights. 
So you're just accustomed to fighting harder and longer where your opponent, especially this opponent, she's, uh, you know, based in boxing, so she's used to three-minute rounds. You're used to a much more physical environment. Is that going to be an advantage for you? I think it will. I think it will. Um, you know, with MMA, there's you have the five minutes, but remember when you shoot for a takedown and you lay there for a second, you get to catch your breath. This, you're on your feet the whole time. You're moving, uh, getting out of the way, stuff like that. So it's almost the same, but do I think my cardio is going to out, outlast there? Yeah, I do. Nobody well, nobody does, does the hill sprints and the track workouts that, that I get put through, and I'm, I'm excited to show that. Now, was there anything in your strength and conditioning from M- the MMA world that you – adapted into the boxing training that you felt like, you know, I don't want to leave this out because I've done this for seven years in MMA and it's, it's, it's you know, given me proven results. I think I should also do this for boxing. Um, there hasn't, to be honest with you. When I went to this boxing coach to help get ready, I trust him. I, I trust the team that I'm working with and they know the transition from MMA to boxing is completely different. So I pretty much, I hand it over to to my coaching staff and everybody else. We're all on board. We're all on the same page right now. So that feels really good. Well, Julian, uh, I believe that's all my questions. I want to thank you for your time. The BoxingBoys.com definitely appreciates it. Like I said, we're going to stay up to date. I'm interested to see the results, and I'm interested to see uh, how long you stick around in boxing. Um, I, I hope that it's a... Uh, a productive and healthy career and and to bring some attention to women's boxing because, you know, I've I've interviewed plenty of women in this sport, and they're a bit disgruntled. You guys really need another big star, a face of women's boxing that can bring it back to primetime television. Uh, In the days of yesteryear with Don King and Christy Martin uh, and and people of that nature. So I wish you the best uh, next week, and, uh, and I hope you can be that person. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Um, thank you so much for having me on. No problem. All right, I'll talk to you after the fight. All right. All right, bye. The Boxing Voice.